Hi everyone. Hello from the Batignolles, the uh, new um, uh, quartier, the new district in Paris, which used to be like a dump, which belonged to the French uh, monopolistic train company called SNCF. And you know, when Paris was actually competing for the Olympics a long time ago, like in the early noughties against London, uh, which even I mean, who eventually won actually the Olympics uh, challenge um, bid. Um, so this place was supposed to be the uh, Paris Olympic Village. If P Paris had won the uh, Olympic bid, which it didn't, uh, because Jacques Chirac, the French president at the time, was a twat. Excuse my French, but really, because he robbed a lot of money from the French state. Uh, uh, but not only was he a robber, but he was also a very bad negotiator. So it's actually um, Tony, what was his name? You know, the uh, prime minister from Labour, the Scottish guy, Tony. Anyway, you know who I'm talking Tony Blair, yes, who was a skilled negotiator and communicator who actually won the bid. And so therefore the Batignol was uh, not changed into the Paris Olympic Village, but was changed into a sort of uh, park, Martin Luther King Park, by the way, and uh, um, in homage to uh, our American friends. And also, uh, it, it was changed, as you can see, with buildings in the back as, uh, as like uh, some, uh, some new buildings for uh, tenants, both uh, council estate tenants as well as private tenants. So it's a bit tense here. Uh, because you've got a mix of population, but it's fine. It is what it is nowadays. So um, I come here, you know, sometimes to relax in the morning. And I just wanted to actually touch point and touch base on what's happening at the moment between France and the UK, in particular in relation to enforcement of judgments from uh, France, for example, into the UK. As I'm sure you know, the UK exited the European Union as a member state on the 1st of January 2021 which implied that it, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, EU regulations were, I think they're called like Brussels regulations, if I remember well, there are one and two. Uh, so these EU regulations uh, made it very easy and smooth to enforce a judgment which had been um, handed down by another European Union member state into another one of the 28 EU member states. Yes. But these Brussels regulations, these EU regulations, no longer apply, obviously, in the UK because they exited last 1st of January 2021. So what happens now? Well, chaos is what happens. Basically, there's a total, like the, uh, the new treaty, which, as far as I know, has still not been signed, by the way, uh, between uh, uh, Fran uh, sorry, the EU and, uh, and the UK. The treaty does not cover the aspects of uh, relating to the enforcement of uh, EU judgments in the UK and vice versa, of course. Um, so there's basically like a legal no man's land. This is, this is, this is or perhaps more accurately, there's a legal uh, emptiness, void, legal void. There you go. Uh, because we don't know. We don't know. Um, I mean, at the moment, we have to reverse back to the default setting system, which is an exequatur um, process whereby you can obtain. Um, the enforcement of your EU judgments in the UK and vice versa, the enforcement of a UK judgment in uh, one of the 27 member states of the EU. So the executive process is pretty complicated, it's pretty expensive and it's pretty long. Um, so that means that at the moment what I notice is that a lot of our clients at our uh, law firm Krefovi, which focuses on advising the creative industries, is that whenever we've got this sort of cross-border issue and one of the parties is from the UK, what they tend to do nowadays is that they tend to revert to um, basically alternative dispute resolution, uh, it's trying desperately to do mediation, but at the moment I can tell you that mediations are quite difficult to uh, to, um, uh, to, to finalize because uh, lots of the parts, a lot of the times the parties just don't want to be forced to pay and to pay up. So uh, mediations are perhaps not coercive, coercive enough. Co uh, yeah, don't have, uh, just basically not a method which has enough coercion in itself for uh, for the uh, basically the, uh, the, 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 the one of the parties to to pay up and pay. Um, so mediation, yeah, maybe, but not really. And especially with the UK. Cause 
because I can tell you at the moment it's pretty difficult to do good business with, with UK counterparties. Um, so what they do is that they try to do uh, uh, arbitration. Why? Because it's more coercive in the sense that there's going to be an arbitrator who is going to hand down an arbitration sentence and thanks to the New York Convention, uh, to which, thank God, the UK is a member of, as well, of course, as the EU, it's much easier to enforce an arbitration sentence in the UK at the moment than, um, as I was saying, a court judgment uh, because there's a legal void, as I just explained. So, yeah, so our, you know, creative uh, clients are now looking at arbitration and they are, uh, you know, address and like knocking at the doors of the likes of um, IFTA, the International uh, Alliance, uh, the International Film and the Television Alliance, based in uh, located in Los Angeles, which is the reference body for uh, filmmakers and uh, TV and film production companies, and um, they always have a booth at Cannes and at Berlin at all the big uh, film uh, trade shows and markets. And basically, they are the reference. They have a great. Um, arbitration body. Um, I am a neutral both for England and Wales as well as France on, uh, on the uh, uh, neutral list, the, the, sorry, the list of neutrals. Neutrals are the name you give to arbitrators. So I am an arbitrator and I, in fact I am actually appointed as an arbitrator at the moment on one of the arbitrations where one of the parties is actually from the UK. So um, so yes, yeah, so that's what our creative clients are doing. They just and also what's happening at the moment with the courts is that because of the uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, things have, sl have slowed down a lot. A lot of the courts, especially in France, have been reluctant to adopt and to convert into virtual hearings like video conference hearings. They just refuse to do it. Perhaps you know for a few criminal matters which are extremely urgent, they would do a, 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 a video hearing with their own technology from the Ministère de l'Intérieur. De la justice, but otherwise the civil and commercial matters, no. So it has to be en présentiel, as we say, so in person hearings. But with all this, you know, stuff happening with COVID, etc., a lot of the judges have just, you know, uh, call themselves sick and uh, therefore, you know, the uh, hearings are being postponed and postponed and postponed. So a dispute which used to be resolved through a court. Um, process in one year now usually now can take up to two years to three years it's just getting quite ridiculous really I am baffled that the French and UK and uh, you know justice uh, powers that be do not understand that they need to absolutely get online and um, a video conference of the of the court hearings is the first step really uh, to, to, to get there so and also better better uh, software or, or actually creating a software for UK because they don't have any to actually do the case management of the uh, of, of the disputes we do have a, a, a case management software in France it's called eBarrow um, uh, but it's very complicated it's extremely expensive you've got to pay 320 euros just to get the key um, and uh, it's going to work if it works for three years it only works with the uh, with the uh, uh, search engine uh, Firefox, uh, Zilla, uh, Firefox, it doesn't work with Chrome, it doesn't work with Safari. Anyway, it's just a nightmare. It's just shite. Excuse my French, but really, is Ibaro? Forget it. Shite. So anyway, so there's a lot of improvement to be done and sophistication in terms of IT, you know, IT tools, etc. Uh, that uh, there's a lot of room for improvement, basically, with the um, with the. Uh, uh, um, uh, court system and also there's this problem which is at the moment that you basically there's a lot of uncertainty as to how you're going to enforce your your court judgment anyway in the UK as I just explained so yeah arbitration seems to be the way to go uh, although I can tell you it's not an easy feat as well because parties can be you know I mean you really have to as an arbitrator you have to be tough to obtain the, uh, the evidence that you need to actually hand down your uh, arbitration sentence, but it's a great experience. I really enjoy doing it. And um, I think that it's um, only going to develop in the future, you know, um, also because it's important for parties, you know, for business parties to be able to resolve their issues in a, in a business manner, in an efficient and uh, streamlined manner, um, as opposed to having to stand the um, uh, bureaucracy and uh, and uh, lengthy delays and uh, lack of commercial awareness as well as of, of the uh, French and UK justice system and, and judges etc etc I mean 
please do read my email, uh, uh, sorry, my uh, article about the tuning judgment, which I um, released last uh, last month, and you will see that basically, you know, those judges are completely out of uh, touch with reality, ready to actually kill a uh, technical innovation like tuning, just because, you know, uh, they uh, enshrined, uh, um, they enshrined principles on neighboring rights, which are not enshrined in, uh, in all countries in the world, by the way, uh, are uh, allegedly uh, infringed. So uh, this is unacceptable, this lack of, uh, of uh, commercial um, pragmatism. Anyway, bye for now, guys. Bye.